Shady Vance calls pregnancy resulting from rape inconvenient. Like inconvenience is traffic. I mean, it is. Make him go through this. Make him go through this. You just heard from Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, uh, who is disgusted with uh, J.D. Vance's previous statements about reproductive rights and whether or not there should be exceptions in abortion bans when the woman who's pregnant uh, became pregnant as a result of a sexual assault and rape. And so we're going to get to Vance's response to what Bashir said there in just a moment. But I do think it's worth Reminding ourselves of what J.D. Vance said back in 2021. This is when he was running for a Senate seat. And uh, he was asked during an interview in September of 2021. Uh, this was a podcast interview. You know, what he thought about exceptions. And look, I, I want to give you this PolitiFact fact check before we hear the audio for ourselves. But they write that Vance didn't directly say rape is inconvenient. But when he was asked in an interview whether laws should allow people to get abortions if they were victims of rape or incest, he said that society shouldn't view a pregnancy or birth resulting from rape or incest as inconvenient. Which, by the way, that's that's terrible. <laughs> like, you, like, you don't need to make anything up. You don't need to be, put words in Vance's mouth. Arguing that a pregnancy that results from a rape is not a big deal and shouldn't be viewed as inconvenient is an insane way of looking at it. But with that in mind, let's take a look at what Vance said. Let's not put words in his mouth. Let's hear it out of his mouth. I asked Vance if he thought anti-abortion laws should include exceptions for rape or incest. Look, I think two wrongs don't make a right. At the end of the day, we're talking about an unborn baby. What kind of society do we want to have? A society that looks at unborn babies as inconveniences to be discarded? Should a woman be forced to carry a child to term after she has been the victim of incest or rape? Look, my view on this has been very clear, and I think the question betrays a certain presumption that's wrong. It's not whether a woman should be forced to bring a child to term, it's whether a child should be allowed to live even though the circumstances of that child's birth are somehow inconvenient or a problem to the society. The question really to me is about the baby. We want women to have opportunities, we want women to have choices, but above all, we want women and young boys in the womb to have the right to life. No, but you don't want women to have choices. You don't want women to have choices. If she is pregnant after getting raped, you would force her to have the rapist baby. And it's not just that she would have to you know, bring that pregnancy to term and deliver that baby. She would be forced to take care of that baby or give it up for adoption, which is also an awful thing to do. And you know, you want to talk about how society shouldn't see it as an inconvenience. We have so many children in foster care right now, so many children who need to be adopted. The idea that we should increase the number of children who need to be adopted is insane to me. And the foster care system is a complete and utter mess, as we all know. Hey, don't scroll away. Did, did, did. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. But think about if the woman is forced to have the baby and is forced to raise that baby. Okay, I mean, first of all, I feel like that in some way rewards the rapist, right? Because. What if the rapist is a complete and utter loser, doesn't have children, and knows, hey, I could just rape a woman and have kids that way? Yeah, so look, it, that's true. Uh, and and I, don't know how, I don't know how most rapes work. I'm, I'm not a cr criminal prosecutor, et cetera, and I don't know what drives people to do insane things like that. Um, but it is absolutely true that if someone, like, let's say, has an obsession with someone else, Oh my God! You could do that and then be like, "Ha ha!" Not only did I violate you that way, but now you're gonna have to take care of my kid for 18 years and look at my face potentially for 18 years and the baby. So look, guys, this is a deal breaker. I mean, you, if there's no fact pattern on earth where I say, "Oh, uh, this woman has been raped," big government should force her. To carry the rapist baby to term. And, and no. potentially I, raise a rapist baby. Every yeah. time 
she looks at that child, she's going to think of her rapist. And I'm think about the kind of and, and potentially household that that child would be raised in. And if the mother is unable to get past it, which, no, by the way, I wouldn't blame her at all. If, yeah. you would, if that child is raised in a home where he or she does not feel loved, that will end up being a societal inconvenience because we don't know what ends up happening with that kid. Does that kid end up turning to uh, drugs or crime or other things to cope with the fact that he or she was raised in a household where he or she did not feel loved? Yeah, so of course, and everybody reacts differently. And maybe some people are angels and they would say, you know, I'm okay with it. And I'm not going to think about the person who did this. And I'm going to love this baby. And I love you if you think that way. But I 100% get it if you don't feel that way, and I wouldn't feel that way. And so, look, guys, uh, we'll get back to the semantic argument that they're having between Bashir and, and JD Vance. But at the very core of this issue is the, the so called pro lifers say the minute it's a zygote, we think it is the absolute equivalent of a child. And now I'm going to be super fair to them. If you thought that, like, so for example, Let's say that a, a woman uh, had suffered rape or incest, and then they had the baby, and the baby is now a, a month old or a day old, right? Every one of us would agree, too late. Of course, the person, that baby exists. There's, of course, you're not going to do anything about it. And I would agree in the third trimester as well, right? But we have this fundamental disagreement we just can't get past, where they think the zygote is already a full grown human being. And, you know, when you, if you throw away a petri dish, that means you murdered someone. And if you throw away three petri dishes, you're a serial killer, right? And the rest of us think that's just nuts, man. We make so many contraception decisions. We make so many decisions about our reproduction in so many different ways. And that is the single most personal decision. So when you come in and I and say, I don't care what your personal philosophy is, and I don't care what your personal situation is. I don't even care if you were raped. I don't care about you. The government decides you don't. And from now on, that zygote will be the most precious thing on earth. By the way, when it's born, well, of course, the government's going to abandon it if you listen to Republicans and never, ever help it. No child tax credit, no help with children at all, to et cetera. Be, to be fair, Vance is supportive of a child tax credit, but it, I don't care. Like that, that to me doesn't matter. What matters is that he's advocating for something that is incredibly cruel. And will in fact lead to societal issues. It will. It just will. And he's not thinking about that because he's an extremist on this issue. It, and by the way, Jack mentions the petri dishes. That's not an exaggeration. That's why the state of Alabama tried to do away with IVF because they view, you know, the the, the fertilized egg that's meant to be uh, used for the IVF uh, treatment, the fertility treatment, as like a human life. Yeah, and, it's crazy. And, and, and also look, for JD Vance, I, I couldn't be fairer than saying, like, I get it from their perspective, the zygote is a fully grown human and you're slicing its throat, right? But brother, even if you thought that, which I, again, 70% of Americans think is not only wrong, but mental, okay? Like, are you nuts? No way. And in fact, when you talk about Petri dishes and the zygotes, et cetera, 90%, 95% of the country thinks that's crazy, right? So. But on top of that, when you say it in the, when you use the word inconvenient within that context, it's not a little inconvenient. And I'm not talking about the rape, we're being fair, right? He didn't say the rape was inconvenient. He said, oh, carrying the baby to term might be an inconvenience for society and presumably for the woman. That's not a little inconvenient. Yeah, it's not a little inconvenient. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Now, let's get back to this feud between uh, Bashir and J.D. Vance, because you heard what Bashir said. Now, listen to how you know J.D. Vance and his spokesperson are twisting what he said and clutching their pearls after, remember, what sparked this whole thing was the incredibly cruel uh, you know, thing that J.D. Vance said during that interview in 2021. Uh, so. Let's start with William Martin, who's the communications director for J.D. Vance. He argues that the Harris campaign surrogate, Governor Andy Bashir, went on national television and explicitly called for a member of Senator Vance's family to be raped. That is Come not on. true, obviously, and we're going to play the tape again. 
His comments are disgusting, vile, and should not be tolerated in American politics. We call on Kamala Harris to immediately repudiate Governor Bashir's comments and demonstrate that regardless of partisan disagreements, this kind of violent rhetoric had no place in our public discourse. And by the way, the same line was repeated by Vance himself. Uh, he tweeted about it saying, what the hell is this? Why is Andy Bashir wishing that, uh, that a member of my family would get raped? What a disgusting person. Why don't we roll the tape again? Let's play that cold open again so you can see for yourselves and judge for yourselves whether Governor Bashir called for a family member of J.D. Vance's to be raped. J.D. Vance calls pregnancy resulting from rape inconvenient. Like inconvenience is traffic. I mean, it is, it make him go through this. Make him go through this. He's trying to get J.D. Vance to do something that seemingly he's unable to do in this context, which is try to put yourself in the shoes of a woman who's just been raped, became pregnant as a result of that rape, and has no choice but to carry that pregnancy to term and potentially be a parent to that child. So if you're gonna get verklempt about Andy Bashir's word choice and say that, oh, he's being unfair and he's framing it wrong, you can't then turn around and frame what he said 200% wrong, right? To use Trump math and say, and do the same thing you're accusing of him, but way, way worse, right? So no human being that watched that clip thought that Andy Bashir was like, hey, I hope somebody in JD Vance's family gets raped. You'd have to be a, a, just an insane person to come away with that conclusion. It was clear that what Bashir is saying is like, if you had to go through that pregnancy, yeah. you wouldn't think that it was convenient. But of course, JD Vance can't go through a pregnancy. That's the reference there. And so look, that's why Republicans, they, had, they work in such bad faith that even when Democrats make mistakes, it, it's, I, I give them a little bit more leeway because they're not such horrible bad faith actors like the Republicans. Yeah, like and I guarantee you, sorry, Anna, yeah. I guarantee you in social media, I will hear for weeks on end, maybe months on end, maybe for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah, Andy Bashir wanted JD Vance's wife raped. Oh, yeah, yeah Andy Bashir wanted JD Vance's daughter raped. And they'll really believe it. They'll believe it for the rest of their lives. Yeah. I Look, the response from J.D. Vance, I feel, is disingenuous, intentionally so. And in, in regard to Bashir, I hear what you're saying. I mean, look, he could have been in more precise in his language, but any normal human being watches that and understands what he's saying. Imagine if you were in her shoes. Please try to empathize with a woman who's going through that. But again, uh, this very serious issue that would have an, a, a tremendous impact, a lifelong impact on a woman's life, apparently is something that's just thrown around like a political football, and it disgusts me. It disgusts me that rather than taking responsibility for the incredibly insensitive statements that J.D. Vance has made in the past and is now coming back to haunt him as he's the VP pick, instead of saying, sorry, hey, I should have been a little more considerate about the consequences of what I'm proposing. He's instead trying to twist the words of Andy Bashir, and I think that's pathetic and incredibly weak. Yeah, and lastly on this is how does the politics of this play out? Big win for the Democrats. Because now we're talking about how JD Vance thinks that, you know, getting pregnant from a rape is inconvenient. And he simply did, inconvenient. Yeah, and he said that, and he looks like a, a madman for saying that. And it's getting a lot more press coverage. So this is Look, I I can't do these things because my job is to be honest and deliver the real news to you guys. But if I was advising and I didn't care about dirty tricks or anything and just wanted to win, I would tell Democrats, misspeak a tiny bit on the worst things they've ever said. The Republicans will then blow it up out of proportion and then the whole country will talk about the terrible thing that they said. I mean, that is what's happening now with this particular story. So. Yeah. Uh, I think for Bashir, it was on accident, but mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, and then look here, I'll do a free one here for you guys. Uh, and then we'll see if they ever use it. Uh, and I used to say this about Dick Cheney, because he had, the same, I think, the same exact number of deferments as Trump. Uh, they're always pushing for war, especially Cheney, obviously. And uh, he had five deferments from Vietnam. And Trump had five deferments from Vietnam. So if I was just being Machiavellian and I was a Democrat, I would say Trump had seven deferments from Vietnam. <laughs> that would force him to come out and say, no, only five. Exactly. Only five. I, I only had the best deferments. I had the strong deferments from Vietnam. I had bone spurs in my elbows. 
Oh, it was my feet. It was my feet. You know. Oh, and then I would. Say, oh, by the way, that just gave me another idea. If I was the Democrats, I'd say, yeah, he had bone spurs in his elbows, so that he would come out and go, no, bone spurs in the feet. Which feet? I don't know. Both of both of them. 